I'm curious, and I wanted to get your your opinions on this, both both Pat and Mike, because um, you know it's 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 one thing that I've let's see this so this is my 15th winter in working in working in news, and this was probably the first blizzard since 2002 that I wasn't outside covering. The blizzard. I was good, inside. Good. You didn't get almost killed by a by a snowdrift again, like up that in was, Boston. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but what I'm curious, you know, it's it's you know when when they're obviously I know Pittsburgh did not get well. You know, we got I think some areas of our viewing area we got 30, 35 inches down. Yeah. There. Yeah, we didn't get, we didn't get that. I mean, I think we got seven or eight. Okay. And I know. Places north of the city, I, I heard you could still see the blades of grass. So they were. Oh no! Yeah, we went much. to Western New York on Saturday. Uh, we just got up uh, uh, partway up two seventy nine, and we were good. We were good from yes, there. Yeah, I think out Somerset got hit, but uh, yeah. I'm curious what what you think would be in situations like this. You know, in severe weather, and I think I think you know when you I think we can agree that while the coverage is overkill, when you get a certain amount of snow, yeah. yes, it is winter. Yeah. But it also disrupts our lives to the point that the media should at some point step up and, and hold people accountable. And, you know, I think it's a great example of Snowmageddon when you had Luke Ravenstall, who was out at Seven Springs all weekend long. And, and you know, and, and yeah, I mean, it's one thing to not, you know, you, you can you can you can be mayor and you, know, you can manage things from afar, but it's there's the whole optics of being there. Uh, yeah. So I'm curious in situations like that, if, if there's a big snowstorm or really any big severe weather event, let's say snowstorms, because there's a certain element that, that requires viewers to stay in and, and sometimes watch TV. What, what can we do? What, like, what can the media do to make it more, you know, more useful? Because I, I just find sticking sticking rollers in the snow and and you know skidding your feet on the on the snow and ice doesn't get you that far. You, you know, it'd be kind of cool, and and obviously it would take a huge partnership between the city works departments and and the news. But it would be really cool how you have the drive times in the morning, and it shows yeah. an entire map of how long it takes to get from different areas in the city down and down to city city central. It'd be cool if you could somehow chart where and when the plows are. So then I could say, Hey, there's a plow coming by my house in, in five minutes and it yeah. hasn't been plowed for a good hour. It's uh-huh. funny you say that, John, because I, because I was going to use that. They, in DC, there is a website I can go to and it'll show you over a 24 hour period where the trucks have gone, if they plowed or if they salted. And I do believe that there, if, if the technology isn't – or if, if they haven't deployed it yet, I think Pittsburgh, at least Pittsburgh itself, is uh, is adopting something similar to that. Because okay, they didn't have – they definitely didn't have it for this one and they, they okay. kind of talked yeah. talked about you know what, what areas of the city had been plowed. And that was – I can't remember what channel it was, but when I turned on the news on Saturday morning, that was actually – a large majority of the news was a live feed from the front of the news truck That's driving great. around Oakland and the, the local vicinities in Southside to show what their different roads look like. And I, 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 I just think it would be helpful. I mean, I would, I would, I would wait an extra 10 minutes if I knew a plow was coming by in five right. versus trying to trudge through the snow right now. Mm-hmm. And even a little bit, because I, I, I know there was a little bit of uh, accountability because, you know, we had the snow tracker and everything in Pittsburgh, right? And I and yeah. I know I heard rumblings through other people talking about it. I was like, yeah, it sounds like the snow tracker was a little questionable because I said it was just by five minutes ago. But my, my road didn't even look touched. But to, to a certain account, uh, or even people calling out, hey, those uh, plows would do better if the... Uh, if the, uh, the the skid was actually all the way down to catch the snow. Uh, but who knows? I don't know what the practice is or whatever the case may be. I know they can't drop it all the way on my road, for instance, because it's so lumpy, because it's a weird yeah. no outlet that, you know, you, it's just ridiculous. Chilla, you've seen it. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things. So I think I think a little bit of, like, how are these systems working? What is breaking down? There, there, there is a little bit of that, you know. I mean, uh, you know, wh- why, is, why, are my, why are the Pittsburgh roads such a wreck? And, and I, I know the reason. I, I think I mostly know the reason for this, but you know, I'm in Beachview, and then I get to Dormont, and everything's clear, absolutely clear. You know, usually it's not go down towards the city; it's let's go the other way on the ridge until we get to Dormont, where they actually got to their roads. But they got square yeah. miles of, of of stuff to cover. They know how to mm-hmm. deal with that, right? Versus the city, 
you know, it, it's a, it's a larger infrastructure, maybe not as not quite as efficient as a square mile can handle uh, yeah, for true. a borough. So, uh, but 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 still, like even to get out and and that they explain those concepts, because otherwise you just got. Everybody complaining. I don't get why my street never gets touched, right? Or I don't get why 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 Broadway up here along the T tracks was an absolute mess by the time we got up there. But again, got and even Banksville, all that stuff, absolute mess the entire time. Like we were slipping and slided and getting through on two seventy nine until we got out of city limits. Again, out of city limits, and everything was cleared off, you know. But again, we were kind of I think uh, leaving the hit areas that that way. But still, um, uh, yeah, I think just the. <laughs> understanding the logistics of what's going on now when um uh when uh, uh the snowpocalypse happened a few years ago and we were a day and a half without power and we could get the news on thanks to our neighbor's generator that was very helpful and i want so what is going on with the power you know <laughs> how long will it take yeah. you know because i don't know about duquesne what what exactly got hit why don't I have power? Because you never know. Why do I? Did, did something go down? Did a transformer go? Did that that old plant that seems to be put together with tin foil, according to my family that works at Duquesne Light, go? You know what? What is it? Did, did the know? snow plow that didn't show up run over run over the electrical lines? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, you know stuff like that. It, uh, to me, that seems like the way to go. So. I, th- I think it's that's good. I mean, I, ju- I, ju- I think it's one of those things where you guys being being technologically savvy, and I think also, you know, in in, in an environment where, you know, you're living in you're living in in, in the sub, you know, in a suburban area of a major city. I think there are certain things, and there's a certain intelligence that, that you have, and that you know, I, the people that we all collectively know have that I feel like should not be insulted every time snow comes down. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, I will say, compared to here, you know, in Boston, the coverage was such that. When there was, you know, when there was a lull in the action, and you know, we we try to quip and joke around a little bit about it, and you know, the management management wouldn't have that. Meantime, the one thing they let me do here is go off when I, you know, on the desk, we had a reporter on the air, and uh, and somebody, you know, sped their truck behind her and, and screamed at the camera, and and you know, I I basically was able to say, you know, I said, well, if there's any justice in the world, that guy's going to be that guy's going to end up uh, uh, end up with two wheels in a snowdrift soon enough, and and. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a message from my boss saying, yes, yes, keep doing that. Nice. So, I, you know, I feel like, you know, there's one thing to hold hold the powerful accountable, which is what the media should do in general. But I like the idea that sometimes, you know, calling out the stupidity of our fellow man, you know, when you're driving around with three feet of snow on top of your car and that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Certainly. And, and, I, and I'm looking at the article that you got here, but you know, like stuff like this, like how to get unstuck from the show, the snow, especially, you know, and well, one of the major problems with DC is DC doesn't get a ton of snow. Right. So even no, you, you no. guys get light snow and it's a, it's a, it's a nightmare down there. Right. I so, think they got, because it was funny on Wednesday night, they had an inch of snow. Okay. During rush hour and all the meteorologists. And by the way, just to show you what a small world this is, our chief meteorologist, her, her, uh, her cousin is Bob Pompiani. Oh, wow. Uh, her maiden name is Pompiani. Uh, she made us, we all did a video talking Pittsburgh ease. It was awesome. But she, she, she did the weather in an Antonio Brown Jersey in DC. That's awesome. But you know, we said the other night, you know, look, there's going to be some snow coming. So just be prepared because it's not going to be, it's a different system, but we're going to get in just enough to cause a problem. The city was caught so off guard. It took people hours to get home. So, you know, fortunately the, the big storm hit over the weekend and it turned out to be, uh, you know, it was an inconvenience, but it wasn't catastrophic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, but, but but so so you know, okay, my wife is classically from from western New York, right? I'm yeah. from I'm from at least like the the bad side of the snow belt uh here nor- north of Pittsburgh. Uh so we grown up and her more so than me um with these conditions and how to deal with it. I've had my share of spin outs. I've had myself in a ditch and I've had to deal with those kinds of things and and when th- the roads get worse, you know, I feel like I'm wildly out of practice personally. Uh so I default to her, but still, yeah. you know, but the, even like you look at the Pittsburgh people don't have x level, right? You know, what happens when a tornado comes? You everybody reminds you the rules of a tornado, don't do this. Get in, you know, the ditch thing, yeah. the basement thing, you know, whatever the case may be. And 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 I'm looking at uh, at the article that you have up and I hear you see the video from this channel too, wherever this is, how to get unstuck from the, unstuck from the snow. Again, those tips, like here, hey, here's all those snow problems that you normally don't deal with in DC, and maybe like 
let's interview some Western New Yorkers and see how they deal with it. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever the yeah. case may be. Or, or, or even they have a special segment with you because you just spent how many years up in Boston. So you're very fresh minded on what's going on with this stuff, right? So, I mean, you know, something like that, 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 that's informative and, and okay, you don't have to be frightened of everything. Just be mindful of it. Take your time, do this, you know, and, and, and kind of teach people to deal with it rather than teach people uh, to be afraid of it. Yeah, I agree with you. So that's my two cents.